Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray in Double Indemnity. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A few years ago, I began a serial in a weekly magazine called Double Indemnity. And believe me, thereafter, I eagerly awaited each new installment. It was one of the most thrilling of James M. Cain's novels, and when Paramount Pictures brought it to the screen, I found the film even more exciting. My renewed enthusiasm was due to our stars, Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray, who created two of the most electrifying characterizations of their careers. Double Indemnity is a drama of intense emotion between two people whose infatuation leads them to murder and revenge. And as a study in suspense, I'm sure you'll find it entirely satisfying. Just as the ladies of our listening audience find our product, Lux Toilet Soap, entirely satisfying for beauty care, especially these fall days. For throughout all the changes of weather, Lux Soap remains a favorite complexion care. Here's Double Indemnity, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Phyllis and Fred McMurray as Walter. Downtown Los Angeles. The night watchman of an insurance company has just opened the door for one of the employees. Working pretty late, aren't you, Mr. Neff? Yeah. yeah this can't wait till morning. Nothing wrong, is there, Mr. Neff? You, you look kind of funny. No, no, I'm fine. Thanks for letting me in. That's okay, Mr. Neff. Walter Neff walks unsteadily to his office. He wets a towel at the water cooler, presses it inside his coat to staunch a bullet wound, and slumps at his desk. His hand reaches to a dictaphone transcribing machine and turns on the switch. Memorandum to Barton Keys, claims manager. Pacific All Risk Insurance Company. Dear Keys, I suppose you'll call this a confession. I just want to set you right about... about the Diedrichson case. You said it wasn't an accident. Check. You said it wasn't suicide. Check. You said it was murder. Check. But you made one mistake, Keys. Just one little mistake. You want to know who killed Dietrichson? Hold tight to that cheap cigar of yours, Keys. I killed Dietrichson. Yes, I killed him. I killed him for money and a, and a woman. And I didn't get the money and I... I didn't get the woman. Pretty, isn't it? Let me light a cigarette. It all began last May. Around the end of May, it was. I had a call to make. A renewal on an automobile policy. Who's at the door, Nettie? What is it? It's an insurance man. He wants Mr. Dietrichson. Now, how do you do? I'm Walter Neff, the Pacific All Risk Insurance Company. Well. Well, how do you do, Mr. Neff? I'm Mrs. Dietrichson. Oh. How do you do, Mrs. Dietrichson? That's all, Nettie. Yes, ma'am. It's, uh, it's about the renewal of automobiles. I can't seem to contact your husband at his office. And well, I... suppose we sit down and you tell me about it. My husband never tells me anything. I guess he's been too busy down at the Long Beach oil field. Uh, well, uh, maybe I could catch him at home some evening. Wouldn't take him to clear up. We've got a new kind of 50% retention feature in the collision coverage. And... You're a pretty smart insurance man, aren't you? I think so. Doing pretty well? That's a living. Do you handle just automobile insurance or all kinds? Well, just name it and I'll write it, Mrs. Dietrichson. Accident insurance? Accident insurance? I should say so. Uh, 
That's a honey of an anklet you're wearing, Mr. Dietrichson. I'm Dietrichen. glad you like it. There's something engraved on it, huh? Just my name. Phyllis. Phyllis, huh? I think I like that. But you're not sure? No, I'd have to drive it around the block a couple of times. We're getting away from insurance, aren't we, Mr. <laughs> Neff? Now, why don't you drop around tomorrow night about 8.30? He'll be home then. Who? My husband. You were anxious to talk to him, weren't you? Yeah, I was, but uh, I'm sort of getting over the idea, if you know what I mean. <laughs> There's a speed limit in this state, Mr. Neff, 45 miles an hour. How fast was I going? I'd say see? around 90. Well, tomorrow night at 8.30 then, huh? Will uh, you be here, too? I usually am. Same chair, same perfume, same anklet? I wonder if I know what you mean. I wonder if you wonder. Good afternoon, Mr. Dietrichson. I can still remember the smell of honeysuckle all along the street. How could I have known that murder can sometimes smell like honeysuckle? Maybe you would have known Keyes the minute she mentioned accident insurance. Well, I went back to the office. They said you'd been yelling for me all afternoon. Oh, come on in, Walter. Come on in. What you'd like to know about that Phillips case? Phillips? Yeah, you wrote a policy on his truck. His truck burned up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Oh, claim waiver, huh? Yeah. Mr. Phillips suddenly decides to withdraw his claim. Mm -hmm. You knew all along it was a thorny, huh? My little man knew. My little man inside of me here. Every time one of those phonies comes along, he ties a knot stomach. <laughs> what kind of amateurs are we? Well, now, wait a minute, Keys. Sure, I wrote that policy, but I said to have him thoroughly checked first. Now, who's blaming you, sweetheart? I'm, I'm sick and tired of trying to pick up after you fast-talking sex. Well, you worry too much, Keys. You're too suspicious. No? <laughs> well, you wouldn't even say today's Tuesday unless you looked at the calendar, and then you'd check to see if it was this year's calendar, and then just to make sure, you'd get a copy of the almanac. Get out of here before <laughs> I throw my desk at you. I love you, too. Yeah? Just thought you'd like to know we nailed another phony. Back in my office was a message from Mrs. Dietrichson. My appointment had been canceled. She wanted me to stop by on Thursday afternoon instead. Phyllis. Phyllis Dietrichson. I was there, all right. Oh, come in, Mr. Neff. I hope you didn't mind changing the appointment. Last night was inconvenient. No, no, I was working on my stamp collection anyway. I was just fixing some iced tea. Would you like a glass? Well, yeah, unless you got a bottle of beer that's not working. Well, there might be some. Nettie! Oh, about those renewals, Mr. Neff, I talked to my husband. Oh, good. He'll renew all right. As a matter of fact, I thought he'd be here this afternoon. No, but uh, he's not. No. Oh, it's terrible. Nettie! Nettie, can't you hear... Oh, I forgot. It's Thursday. It's her day off. Uh -huh. Well, uh, iced tea will be fine. Lemon? Sugar? Yeah, fix it your way. As long as it's the maid's day off, maybe there's uh, something I can do for you. Like uh, running the vacuum cleaner. Fresh. You know, I used to peddle vacuum cleaners. Not much money, but you learn a lot about life. I didn't think you learned it from a correspondence course, Mr. Neff. <laughs> Make it Walter, huh? All right. Walter. Tell me, how much commission do you make on this insurance? Twenty percent. Why? Oh, I thought perhaps I could throw a little more business your way. Uh, my husband, I worry a lot about him in those oil fields. It can be very dangerous. Dangerous? For an executive? Oh, you don't know him. He's right down there with the drilling crews. It, oh. It's got me worried sick. Well, you mean some dark night a derrick might fall? Oh, we talk of that. But that's the idea. Well, accidents happen all the time. Don't you think he should be insured? Oh, sure. Well, what kind could he have? Well, enough to cover doctor and hospital bills. Say 125 a week cash benefit, and he'd rate about 50,000 capital sum. Capital sum? What does that mean? Well, in case the accident is fatal. No, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I, I suppose you have to think of everything in your business. Well, why don't I talk to him about it? Well, you could try, but he's pretty tough going. <laughs> They're all tough at first. He has a lot on his mind. He, he doesn't seem to want to listen to anything except maybe a baseball game on the radio. Sometimes we sit here all evening and never say a word to each other. Hmm. Sounds pretty dull. Walter, I, uh, I want to ask you something. Could I get an accident policy without bothering him at all? How's that? Well, it would make it easier for you, too. You wouldn't even have to talk to him. I could pay for it, and he needn't know anything about it. Why shouldn't he know? Well, because he doesn't want accident insurance. He's uh, superstitious about it. A lot of people are. It's funny, isn't it? If there were a way to get it like that, all the worry would be over. See what I mean, Walter? I think it's lovely. And then if some dark, wet night, the Derek did fall what on Derek? him. What Derek? I don't know what you're talking about. Or maybe about. a car backing over him, or he could fall out of the upstairs Are window. Are you crazy? Either. Not that crazy, Mrs. Dietrich. What's the matter? Look, baby. You can't get away with it. 
You want him to die, don't That's you? That's a horrible thing to say. What do you take me for? A guy that walks into a good-looking dame's front parlor and says, Good afternoon, I sell accident insurance on husbands. Have you got one that's been around too long? Just give me a smile and I'll help you collect. I think you're rotten. I think you're swell. As long as I'm not your husband. Get out of here. You bet I'll get out of here. I'll get out of here, but quick, baby. I'd let her have it, Keys, straight between the eyes. I got hold of a red-hot poker, and the time to drop it was now before it burned my hands. But all the time I knew that I hadn't walked out on anything. That this wasn't the end. I knew that sooner or later my doorbell would ring, and I'd know who it was without even having to think. Hello. You forgot your hat this afternoon. Did I? How'd you know where I lived? The telephone book. It's raining. Yeah. Sit down. Your husband go out tonight? The oil fields. He phoned he'd be late. Oh, Walter, I must have said something that gave you a terribly wrong impression. You must never think anything like that about me. Okay. No, it's not okay. Not if you don't believe me. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to be nice to me. Like you were at first. Something's happened. I know it has. It's happened to us. I feel as if he were watching me. Oh, not that he cares, but he keeps me on a leash so tight I can't breathe. Well, he's in Long Beach, isn't he? Relax. <laughs> you have a nice place here. Who takes care of it? A cleaning woman comes in now and then. You cook your own breakfast? I squeeze a grapefruit once in a while. You're alone. Huh? Oh, that sounds wonderful. You don't have to sit across the table and smile at him and that daughter of his every morning of your life. Daughter? That's right. You didn't meet Lola, did you? He thinks a lot more of her than he does of me. Ever think about a divorce? Oh, he'd never give me one. Well, why'd you marry him? I wanted a home. Why not? Is that so wrong? But that's not the only reason. His first wife was sick a long time. I was her nurse. When she died, he was terribly broken up. I, I, I pitied him so. But now you hate him. Yes. Yes, he's just awful to me. Every time I buy a dress or a pair of shoes, he yells his head off. He's always been mean to me. So you lie awake in the dark and listen to him snore and get ideas. Walter, I don't want to kill him. I never did, not even when he gets drunk and slaps my face. Only sometimes you wish he were dead. Perhaps I do. And you wish it was an accident and you had that policy for $50,000, is that it? Perhaps that, too. The other night we drove home from a party. He was drunk again. When we drove into the garage, he sat his head on a steering wheel and the motor still running. And I thought what it would be like if I didn't turn it off. Just closed the door and left him there. I'll tell you what it would be like. We've got a guy in our office named Keyes. In three minutes, he'd know it wasn't an accident. In ten minutes, you'd be sitting under hot lights. In 30 minutes, you'd be signing your name to a confession. Walter, I didn't do it. I'm not going to do not it. Not if there's an insurance company in the picture. They know more tricks than a carload of monkeys. And if there's a death mixed on it, you haven't got a prayer. They'll hang you just as sure as ten dimes will buy a dollar, baby. And I don't want you to hang, baby. So stop thinking about it, will you? Oh, why did I come here? So we just sat there, Keys. And she started crying, softly, like the rain on the window. Maybe she'd stop thinking about it, but not me. I couldn't. It was all tied up with something I'd been thinking about for years. You know how it is, Keys. In this business, you can't sleep for trying to figure out all the angles they could pull on you. And then one night, you get to thinking how you could crook the house yourself and do it smart because you know every trick in the book. And then suddenly, the doorbell rings and the, the whole setup is right there in the room with you. Walter, I, I better leave. Will you phone me? Oh, I hate him. I loathe going back to him. You believe me, don't you? Sure. Sure, I believe I you. I can't stand it anymore. What if they did hang me? They're not going to hang it's you. It's better than going on this way. They're not going to hang you because I'm going to help you do it. Do you know what you're saying? Come here. I'm saying we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right. And I'm the guy that knows how. What are you hurting There's me? There's not going to be any slip-up. Nothing sloppy, nothing weak. It's got to be perfect. Yes. Now, call me tomorrow, but not from your house. And watch your step every minute. This has got to be perfect, do you understand? Straight down the line, baby. Straight down the line. Good night, Walter. That was it, Keys. The machinery had started to move. Nothing could stop it now. The first thing to do was fix Dietrichson up with that accident policy. Oh, I knew he wouldn't buy, but all I wanted was his signature on an application. 
That meant I'd have to get him to sign without his knowing what he was signing. And I wanted another witness besides Phyllis to hear, hear me giving him a sales talk. A couple of nights later, I went to the house. Everything looked fine, except I didn't like the witness Phyllis had brought in. Dietrichson's daughter, Lola. Didn't you hear me, Neff? I just told you I don't want any accident. Now, now look, Mr. Dietrichson, the only way you can protect yourself... Yeah, is yeah, to... yeah. Next thing you'll tell me is I need earthquake insurance or lightning That's insurance. That's right, honey. Why, if we bought all the insurance they'd tell us we need, we'd be broke all the time. Look, what keeps us broke is you're going out and buying five hats at a crack. But, Mr. Dietrichson, dollar for dollar accident insurance is the cheapest coverage you can buy. All I want is a renewal on that automobile insurance. Well, just as you say... Phyllis, do you mind if I go out? Got something better to do, Lola? Yes, I have. Father, is it all right if I run along? I'm going skating with Anne. Anne, huh? Or is it really that Nino Zacchetti again? Oh, Father, please. Better not be. If I ever catch you with that Zacchetti guy... It's Anne Matthews, Father. We're going ice skating. And if you don't mind, I'd rather not keep her waiting. Okay, go on. Good night, Father. Good night, Phyllis. Uh, Good night, Miss Edrickson. Glad I've met you. Thank you. A great little fighter for her weight. Well, uh, now if you'll just sign these papers, Mr. Dietrichson, you'll be covered till the new policies are issued. Just so I'm protected when I drive up north. He was a Stanford man, Mr. Neff. He still goes to his class reunion at Palo Alto. What's wrong with that? Can I have a little fun even once a year? What do I sign? The, uh, the bottom line. But both copies, please. How much are you taking me for? Well, I'll, uh, I'll figure it up later. I can pick up your check at the office. I think that's enough insurance for one evening. Yeah. I'm going upstairs, fellas. Bring me a drink when you come up. Well, good night, Mr. Dietrichson, and thank you. All right, Walter. It's fine. He signed, didn't sure he? Sure he signed. Now, the trip to Palo Alto, when? The end of the month. He drives, He huh? always drives. Well, not this time. You're going to make him take the train. Why? Because it's all worked out for a train. Now, listen, baby. There's a clause in every accident policy, a little thing called double indemnity. That means they'll pay double on certain accidents, the kind that almost never happen. Like, for instance, if a guy is killed on a train, they'll pay 100000 instead of 50000 I see. We're hitting it for the limit, baby. That's why it's got to be the train. It'll be a train, Walter, just the way you want it. Straight down the line. In a few moments, we'll bring you the second act of Double Indemnity. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Double Indemnity, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Phyllis and Fred McMurray as Walter. Earlier tonight, Walter Neff, insurance salesman, was shot and wounded. He was able to reach his office... There, at his desk, he continues to talk into the office recorder. A message for a man named Keyes. Well, Keyes, the first step was over. Phyllis and I had Dietrichson's signature on that application for accident insurance. I went out to my car. Waiting for me was Dietrichson's daughter, Lola. I thought you might give me a lift, Mr. Neff. Oh, oh, sure. (laughs) You like ice skating, huh? I can take it or leave it. Only tonight you're leaving it? Yes. Yes, I am. Could you take me as far as Franklin and Vermont? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Who's waiting on the corner there? His name is Nino Zacchetti. Is that the fellow your father doesn't want you to meet? Nino's not what my father thinks at all. If Nino just weren't so darn hot-headed, if he'd only... I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Please, you won't say anything. I haven't heard a word, Mrs. Dietrichson. Miss Dietrichson. (laughs) Thanks, Mr. Neff. You're nice. I saw her run up to her boyfriend. I found myself hoping he was right for her. She'd be needing somebody now because... because her father was a dead pigeon. Only a question of time and not much time at that. Phyllis and I had to pick a place where we could meet, a safe place. We decided on that supermarket on Los Feliz Boulevard. She was to be there every morning around 11 o'clock, shopping. And I could run into her there, sort of accidentally on purpose. I've wanted to talk to you ever since yesterday, Not Walter. Not so loud. Move over to the shelves. Well, it's all set. 
The policy came through. Give it to me. Nobody's watching us. Can you get it in a safe deposit yes, box? Yes, yes. We both have keys. You turn your head. Take something off of the shelf. Put it in the cart. You're nervous, Walter. I'm very calm. Remember, you never saw that policy. You never even touched oh, it. Oh, I'm not a fool, Walter. No. Nah. When is he leaving? You talk him into taking the train. You mean you? I can say something now? I've been trying to tell you the trip to Palo Alto is off. He isn't going. What happened? He had an accident at the oil field. His leg is broken. It's in a cast. He broke his leg. What do we do now, Walter? Nothing. Nothing. We just wait. Walk around, will you? We're supposed to be shot. But we can't wait. I can't go on like this. What do you suppose would happen if he found out about the policy? Nothing as bad as sitting in that death house. Don't ever talk like that. Well, don't let's start losing our heads, that's it's all. It's not our heads. It's our nerve we're losing. Oh, it's so awful without you, Walter. It's like a wall between us. I'm thinking of you every minute, baby. Don't ever stop, Walter. Don't ever. I let a full week go by, Keys, and I didn't even try to see Phyllis again. I kept telling myself that maybe those fates they say watch over you had broken his leg to give me a way out. And then it was the 15th of June. You may remember the date, Keys. You were in my office. I'll get it, Walter. Probably Norton looking for me. Nella. Yeah, 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 just a minute. It's for you, Dame. Oh. Hello. Is this Mr. Death? Uh, yes. Walter, I had to call you. It's urgent. Well, I- I'm busy, Margie. Uh, I'll have to call you back. You can't. I've only got a minute. Walter, he's going away tonight on the train. He's on crutches. The doctor says he can go if he's careful. Oh, it's wonderful, Walter, just the way you wanted it. On a train. Only with crutches, it makes it much better, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keys, uh, suppose I join you in your office, huh? Oh, that's okay. I'll wait. Only tell the dame not to take all day, huh? Uh, go ahead, Margie. Uh, make it snappy. It's the 10.15 from Glendale. I'm driving him there. It's still the same dark street, isn't it? And the signal is three honks on the horn. Anything else? Uh, oh, uh, what color did you pick? Uh, blue. Navy blue. And the cast is on his left leg. Yeah, that suits me fine. This is I'll take care of everything. Goodbye, Margie. Uh, the dame's chasing you again? Or is it none of my business? Well, if I told you she was a customer, you... Margie, huh? Customer? I bet she drinks from the bottle. <laughs> I better see what Norton wants. There you were, Keys, right there when Phyllis called me. And those fates I was talking about had only been stalling. Now they'd thrown the switch and the time for thinking had all run out. I wanted my movements accounted for up to the last possible second. Foolproof alibis. I drove my car into the garage in the basement of my apartment house. Lost job, Mr. Neff? Sure. Only have a couple of other cars ahead of you. Well, that's okay, Charlie. I'm not going out. I won't be needing it till morning. Okay, Mr. Neff. That'll give me time to do a good job on it. Then I called Mr. Norton, asked him to give me, ask him some phony questions about liability rates. He lives in Westwood Keys, a toll call. That meant there'd be a record of it. I changed into a blue suit, the same color Dietrichson would be wearing and waited for Norton to call me back with the figures. Then I stuffed a hand towel and a roll of adhesive in my pocket so I could fake something that looked like a cast on a broken leg. Next, I stuck a card inside the telephone box. If somebody called me, the card would fall down when the bell rang. That way I'd know if anyone tried to get me while I was away. I did the same thing with the doorbell. I left my apartment by the service stairs and walked all the way to the Dietrichson house. It was easy getting into the garage. I got in the back of the car and lay there on the floor and waited. Finally, they came out. The car started. For a long time, they didn't say a word. You're pretty quiet. Leg bothering you? No more than usual. Remember what the doctor said. If you get careless, you might wind up with a shorter leg. So what? Makes you feel pretty good to get away from me, doesn't it? For three days? Hey, how come you're taking this street? What's wrong with it? You shouldn't have turned. This is the wrong street. What'd you turn here for? Why are you blowing that horn? Answer me. I said, why are you... Dietrichson was dead. That part was over. She kept driving around till I told her to head for the station. Everything all right, Walter? Did you cover him with a robe? Yeah, we can get out. Yeah, the crutches. I'll take care of the red cap and the conductor. I'll tell them to let you alone that you don't like to be helped. Ready? Yeah. 
Don't worry, Walter. I'll go as soon as the train leaves, straight down the highway as far as that refinery. Then I turn left onto the dirt road to the railroad tracks. You've got plenty of time, but watch your driving. You don't want any cops stopping you with him in the back. Oh, Walter, we've been through this so many times. And I'll drop off the train as close to the spot as I can. There's a red cap coming. Yeah. Car 9, Section 11. Just my husband is going. Oh, no, no, thank you. He doesn't like to be helped. Yes, ma'am. This way, please. The train was a few minutes out of Glendale. I hobbled back to the observation platform. I didn't have much time. Only I found that I wasn't alone. Can I help you, mister? Oh, broken leg, huh? Yeah, I, uh, I just thought I'd like to see what it's like out here. No, no, thanks. I can manage fine. Going far? Uh, Palo Alto. I'm going all the way to Medford, Oregon. <laughs> My name's Jackson. Uh, how do you do? You uh, looking for something, uh, mister? Dietrichson. It's just my cigar case. I, I guess I left it in my coat back in the car. Maybe I can find a port. Oh, you just stay where you are, Mr. Dittrickson. Oh, thanks. I'll be glad to get them for you. What car? Well, it's car 9, section 11. A dark gray top coat. Be right back, Mr. Dittrickson. I had stayed in the shadows. Jackson never did get a good look at my face. But there was no time to think about him. I climbed over the railing and dropped off. Walter, you're all right. You're yes. not hurt. No, no, not a scratch. Can you see the cards down there? Yeah, I can see it. Can you manage him alone? Yes. What do you want me to do? Nothing. I'll walk down the road a little, just in case. I'll wait for you. I carried the body to the tracks. As we drove back, we went over once more what she was to do at the inquest and about the insurance when that came up. Yes, Walter, yes, I know just what to do. Did you think I'd go all to pieces now that it's over? I said I'd help you, Walter. Maybe now you'll believe. Not a nerve, Keys. Not even a tear. Not even a blink of the eyes. She dropped me off a block away from my apartment house. We'd better not see each other for a while, darling. Oh, it's going to be awful. We can meet in the market, say, on Thursday. Walter. Well? You're going to leave me, just like that? Aren't you going to kiss me? Straight down the line, isn't it? I love you, Walter. That's all there was to it, Keys. Perfect. Every detail. And yet, as I walked down the street, suddenly it came over me that everything would go wrong. It sounds crazy, Keys, but it, it was true, so help me. I couldn't hear my own footsteps. It was the walk of a dead man. The next day, it was worse when the story broke in the newspapers, and the day after that, when I knew you'd start digging into it. Then Norton, the supervisor, said he wanted to see me. Sit down, Walter. About that Dietrichson case. Yes, Mr. Norton. Anything wrong? We had him insured, Walter. It's going to cost us a lot of money. That's always wrong. Uh huh. Uh, what about the inquest? His wife and daughter made the identification. Verdict: accidental death. What do the police figure? He got tangled up in his crutches and fell off the train. They're satisfied. It's not their money. Can I come in? Well, did you find him, Keys? That Jackson fellow? Yeah, I just talked to him in Medford. Oh, hello, Walter. Who's Jackson? The last man who saw Dietrichson alive. There's not much he can tell us, either. Well, that's fine, isn't it? And a great piece of salesmanship when we sold Dietrichson that policy. Oh, no, there's no use pushing Walter around. Is he supposed to know when a guy's going to fall off a train? Fall off? Are you sure Dietrichson fell off? Yes. Yes, I am. Not even one of those interesting little hunches of yours? I'm surprised, Keys, because I formed a very definite opinion... I know that it wasn't an accident. Not an accident? Well, you seem surprised, Walter. But what about you? Me? Well, you've got the ball, Mr. Norton. Let's see you run with it. All right. Watch. Yes, Mr. Norton? You can send her in now. 
There's a widespread feeling that just because a man has a big office, he's an idiot. I'm having a visitor. I want you both to stay and watch me handle this. Mr. Norton, this is Mrs. Dietrichson. This was it. How do you do, Mrs. Dietrichson? This was the finish. Won't you be seated, please? My hand shook, so I had to put them in my pockets. Is it Mr. Keyes? Who would give it away first? Department. Phyllis? How do you do? Or do you I? Do? And, uh... He knew. Mr. Neff? How do you do? Norton said he knew. You know why we asked you to come here, Mrs. Dietrichson? All I know is that your secretary made it sound very urgent. Something about, uh, accident. Yes, Mrs. Dietrichson. Your husband was insured. You'll probably find the policy among his personal papers. His safe deposit box hasn't been opened yet. Meanwhile, I'm afraid we're not at all satisfied with the report of the inquest. I don't know what you mean. Frankly, we suspect suicide. Now, you said at the inquest that your husband had no worries of any kind. Yes, yes, I said that. Yet only a short time ago, he takes out an accident policy and tells you nothing about it. Why? Because he doesn't want his family to suspect what he intends to do. Do what, Mr. Norton? Commit suicide. In which case, Mrs. Dietrichson, this company is not liable. Now, we could go to court, you know. No, I don't know anything. I don't even know why I came here. I didn't say we want to go to court. What I suggest is a, a settlement of some Don't sort. bother, Mr. Norton. When I came in here, I had no idea your company owed me money. You told me you did, and then you told me you didn't. Now you tell me you want to pay a part of it, whatever it is. You want to bargain with me at a time like this. I don't like your insinuations about my husband, and I don't like your methods. In fact, I don't like you, Mr. Norton. Goodbye. Yes, sir, you sure carried the ball, Mr. Norton. Let her go to court. We'll prove it was suicide. We will? The first thing that struck me was that suicide angle, only I dumped it in the waste paper basket three seconds later. You ought to take a look at the statistics on suicide sometime. You might learn a little something about the insurance business. Mr. Keyes, I was raised in the insurance business. Then it's time you realize this company's got to pay Mrs. Dietrichson $100,000. Come on, Walter, let's get back to work. I could have hugged you right then and there, Keyes. You were the only one we were really scared of. And instead, you were almost playing on our team. That night, I could feel the floor under my feet again. That hundred thousand bucks was as safe for Phyllis and me as if we had it in the bank. Hello? I was paying you a home, darling. Uh, hello, baby. Everything all right? Sure, sure, it's fine. You were wonderful in Norton's office. I felt so funny. I wanted to look at you all the time. How do you think I felt? Where are you now? At the drugstore. Can I come up? Okay, but be careful. Don't let anybody see you. Hello, Walter. Keys. Uh, what's the matter? Oh, I know you weren't expecting no, me, but... No, no, I wasn't. Uh, what's on your mind? <laughs> what are you so nervous about? Who says I'm nervous? Oh, forget it, forget it. It's me, I guess. I got the jumps. Eh, that Dietrichson case. You know, Walter, there's something fishy about that. Like what? I don't know. But right now, I'll swear that it wasn't suicide and it wasn't an accident either. Well... What else is left? You mean somebody... What, what, are you, what are you trying to tell me, Keyes? Go to the door. You got company. Well, what about Dietrichson? If it wasn't an accident... Do... What are you yelling for? You want me to go to the door? Keyes, wait. Wait, I'll get it. Keyes! In a few moments, we'll continue with Act Three of Double Indemnity. The curtain rises on Act Three of Double Indemnity. Starring Barbara Samuelis and Fred McMurray as Walter. Late at night, alone in his office, Walter Neff struggles against the pain of his wound as he tries desperately to finish relating a sordid procession of facts into the office recorder. A memorandum to Mr. Keyes. You went to the door, didn't you, Keyes? You opened it. And I stood there a few feet behind you on, a, on the edge of a cliff. You were pushing me over. Huh. That's funny. 
Nobody here. Nobody's... Well, look for yourself. Must have come to the wrong door, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, what were you trying to tell me about Dietrichson? Huh? Oh. Well, Dietrichson had accident insurance, right? Now, he broke his leg. Now, why didn't he put in a claim? Why? Well, maybe he just didn't have time to... Or maybe he just didn't know he was insured. No, 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 no. That, that couldn't be. You delivered the policy to him, didn't you? Sure. Down at the oil field. Uh, guy takes out an accident policy. It's worth $100,000. Two weeks later, he's killed by falling off an observation platform. Do you know what the mathematical chances are of that happening? About one in a billion. I'm telling you, Walter, something has been worked on us. Murder? All right, who? That wide-eyed dame who just doesn't know anything about anything, Mrs. Dietrichson. Oh, you're crazy, Key. She wasn't even on the train. Oh, I don't claim to know how it was work or who worked it. <laughs> well, you're no help to me, are you? Well, give me some time to think it over. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I bothered you, Walter. I don't make much sense, do I? You just don't seem to have anything to go on. No, you? no, nothing at all. Well, I'll see you in the morning, Walter. Yeah. Five minutes later, Phyllis Dietrichson was in my apartment. It was Phyllis, all right, who'd come to the door while you were there. But she'd heard us talking. She ducked back in the elevator before you opened the door. Luck and brains, keys. A pretty tough combination to beat. I mustn't stay long, Walter. How do we know he won't decide to come back? Just tell me how much he knows. Nothing, just a hunch. But he can't prove a thing, can he? Not if we're careful. Not if we don't see each other for a while. How long a while? Until this dies down. You afraid, baby? Yes, I'm afraid, but not of keys. I'm afraid of us. We're not the same anymore. We did it so we could be together. Instead of that, it's pulling us apart, isn't it, Walter? And you don't really care whether we see each other or not. Shut up, baby. Shut up and come here. You still think I don't care? No, darling. Darling. The next day at the office, I had a visitor, Keys. Remember Dedrickson's daughter... Well, here she was again with something big on her mind. You think I'm crazy, Mr. Neff, but I'm not. Honestly, it's the same awful feeling I had once before when my mother died. When your mother died? We were at Lake Arrowhead six years ago last winter. My mother was very sick with pneumonia. One night I found her delirious with fever. All the blankets were on the floor and the windows were wide open. Then the nurse came into the room. She didn't say a word, but there was a look in her eyes I'll never forget. Two days later, my mother was dead. Do you know who that nurse was? Who? Phyllis. I tried to tell my father, but he wouldn't listen to me. Five months later, she married him. I I tried to forget about it. But now it's all back again. Now that something's happened to my father, too. No, you're not talking sense, Lola. Your father fell off a train. And two days before, Phyllis was in a room in front of a mirror, planning a black veil to her hat as if she couldn't wait to see how she'd look in mourning. You've got a pretty bad shock. Aren't you imagining things? She did it. She did it for the money. Only she's not going to get away with it because I'm going to tell everything I know. Lola, who else have you told this to? No one. Phyllis? Of course not. I, I've moved out of the house. I, I've taken a little apartment. You haven't told that boyfriend? Nino? No, I, I'm not seeing him anymore. We had a fight. Uh, so you just sit in that little apartment of yours and look at the four walls, huh? Yes, Mr. Neff. But I do a lot of thinking about Phyllis. I took Lola out for dinner. I'd have to cheer her up. I'd have to make sure she wouldn't drop that dynamite about Phyllis to anyone else. I had no chance to talk to Phyllis. You were watching her like a hawk, Keyes. The next day, you sent for me. I've got it, Walter. I've got it. All wrapped up in tissue paper. Dietrichson was murdered, and I can tell you how. Go ahead, Keyes. I'm listening. First of all, Dietrichson was never on the train. He was killed somewhere else and then put near the tracks by the wife and somebody else. Then the somebody else took the crutches and went aboard the train posing as Dietrichson. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. How, how can you be sure? Now, let's see what we've got in the way of proof. The only one who really got a good look at this supposed Dietrichson is that Jackson guy from Oregon. Open the door, Walter, and tell Jackson to come in, will you? Jackson's here? Yeah, come on. Tell him to come in, will you? Uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, would you come in, please? Yeah, Mr. Jackson, please, uh, take a chair. Yeah. Take a chair. Mm-hmm. Now, Mr. Jackson, did you study those photographs of Dietrichson? Not the same man, Mr. Keyes. No, sir, really. The man in these photographs is not the same man I saw on that train. Ah, there you are, Walter. There's your proof. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Neff, one of our salesmen, Mr. Mm-hmm. Jackson. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Neff. Now, I'd like you to describe the man you saw on the train. 
Oh, 10 or 15 years younger than the man in these photos. Uh-huh. Of course, it was pretty dark, and he kind of kept turning his back to me, but just the same, I am positive. Well, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, we may need you again if the case comes to court, you uh, understand? Expenses paid again? Of oh, yes, 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 of course. I'll sign a voucher now. It'll only take a moment. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you ever been up in Oregon, Mr. Neff? What? No, no, I never have. That's funny. I keep looking at you like I met you somewhere. Yeah, that's ought to cover everything for you. Oh, well, that's mighty what of you, Mr. Keyes. And any time you need me, you know. Yeah, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Well, there it is, Walter. And pretty soon we'll know who the somebody else is. Will we? Oh, they've got to meet. They've committed a murder. They're stuck with each other. They're on a trolley ride. Only it's a one-way trip, Walter, and the last stop's the cemetery. Yeah, you see this, this policy? Diedrichson's? Yeah, the wife just put in a claim. Well, I'm going to throw it right back at her. I left the office and phoned Phyllis from a public booth. We met in the market an hour later. Why did you call, Walter? What's the matter? Everything. Keyes is rejecting your claim. He's sitting back with his mouth watering, waiting for you to sue. But you're not going to. What's he got to stop me? Plenty. He's got it all figured out. But if he rejects the claim, I'll have to sue. Then you'll be in court and a lot of other things are going to come up. Such as you and the first Mrs. Dietrichson. What about me and the first Mrs. Dietrichson? The way she died. And about that morning veil you were trying on two days before you Lola. needed it. Lola. You've seen Lola. Sure I've seen her. Trying to make sure she won't yell her head off about She's what she knows. She's putting on an act for you, crying all over your shoulder, that lying Keep it out of this, Phyllis. Remember, you're not going to sue. Because you don't want the money anymore, even if you could have it. Because Lola's made you feel like a heel all of a sudden. It isn't the money now, it's our next. Oh, you're not fooling me, Walter. It's because of Lola, what you did to her father. You're afraid she might find out someday and you can't take it, I can said you? leave her out of this. It's me I'm talking about. I don't want to be left out of it. It's just we can't go through with it, that's We all. have gone through with it. The tough part is all behind us. We just have to hold on now and not go soft, stick close to together the way we started out. But the police may be watching us Then right let now. them get an eyeful. I loved you, Walter, and I hated him. But I wasn't going to do anything about it, not until I met you. You planned the whole thing. I only wanted him dead. And I'm the one who was dead. Is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you that nobody is pulling out. We went into it together, and we're coming out together. It's straight down the line for both of us. Remember? <laughs> Yes, I remembered. Just like I remembered what you told me, Keys. The last stop's the cemetery. I guess that was the first time I ever thought of Phyllis that way. Dead, I mean. And how it would be if she were dead. I saw Lola a lot that week. One night we drove down to the beach and all of a sudden she started to cry. <laughs> Nino, Walter. Nino. I thought you weren't seeing him. I wouldn't tell anyone else but you. They killed my father together. Nino and Phyllis. He helped you do it. I know he did. What makes you so sure? I, I've been following him. He's been to the house to see her night after night. Maybe he was just going with me as a blind in the night of the murder. You promised me you weren't going to talk like this anymore. Oh, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe it's all in my mind. Sure, sure. It's all in your mind. I still love him, Walter. I do love him. I do. Zacchetti, Phyllis and Zacchetti. This was one I couldn't figure out. I couldn't come close to it. But the real brain twister came today. You sprung it on me keys after hours when you caught me in the lobby of the building. Well, hold on to your hat, Walter. Yeah, what for? The Dietrichson case just busted wide right open. and the guy showed up, the guy who helped her do it. So you were right all along, huh? Yeah, yeah. She just filed suit against us to collect a hundred grand. Well, that's okay by me. When we get her into that courtroom, I'm going to tear her to pieces. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Well, I'd sure like one, Keith, but uh, I've got a date. Huh? Somebody better looking than me? <laughs> that Marcia dame, huh? Yeah, well, I'll bet she still drinks from the bottle. I went back to the office. I was scared stiff. Maybe you were playing cat and mouse with me. Maybe you knew all along that I was the somebody else. I had to find out. And I knew where to look. Your desk. The cylinder from the office recorder. The confidential message you dictated to the boss already for the girl to type out in the morning. I put the cylinder on the machine. And listened. Dear Mr. Norton, with regard to your proposal to place Walter Neff under surveillance, I disagree, absolutely. 
I've known Neff intimately for 11 years and personally vouched for him without reservation. The man we want is Nino Zacchetti. We've definitely established a connection between Zacchetti and Phyllis Dietrichson as indicated in detail in the attached file. I strongly urge that this whole matter be turned over to the district attorney. I telephoned Phyllis. I told her I'd have to see her that night. It was a hard sale. She was scared of your keys. How do you know nobody's watching the house? I know, that's all. I'll tell you when I see you. 11 o'clock? 11 o'clock. The lights will all be out. I'll leave the front door unlocked. Okay. Goodbye, Walter. And then, for the first time, I saw a way to get clear of the whole mess I was in. And of Phyllis, too. What I didn't know was that she had plans of her own. In here, Walter. Can you see? Yeah. Hello, baby. Anybody else in the house? No, nobody. We're all alone, huh? I just came to say goodbye. Goodbye? Where are you going? You're the one that's going. Suppose you stop being funny. Let's have it, whatever it is. A friend of mine's got a theory. He says when two people commit a murder, they have to go on riding together to the end of the line. And the last stop is the cemetery. Maybe he's got something there, Walter. Only I've got another guy to finish my ride for me. Nino Zacchetti. Really? It's been you and that Zacchetti guy all along. No, no, that's not so. Well, it doesn't matter now. The point is, Keyes believes Zacchetti's the one he's been looking for. in the gas chamber before he knows what's happening And to me, him. Walter? What's happening to me all this time? Don't be silly, baby. You helped him do the murder. That's what Keyes thinks, and what Keyes thinks is good enough for me. Maybe it's not good enough for me, Walter. Maybe I don't go for the idea. Maybe I've had Zacchetti here so they won't get a chance to trip me up. So we can get the money and be together. That's cute, baby. Say it again. He came here first to ask where Lola was. I made him come back. I was working on him. I kept hammering into him that she was going out with another man so he'd go into one of his jealous rages and then I'd tell him where she was. And you know what he would have done to her. Yes. I believe he has just rotten enough. We're both rotten. Is what you've got cooked up for tonight any better? The window's open. Do you mind if I close it? Why don't you? Yes, Walter. It's you or me, isn't it? What else can I do? So you had a gun all the time. You'd better try it again. No, take it. Take the gun. I think I will. Why didn't you shoot me again? Don't tell me it's because you've been in love with me all this time. No. No, I never loved you, Walter. Not you or anybody else. I used you just as you said. That's all you ever meant to me. Until now when I... I couldn't fire that second shot. I... I never thought that could happen to me. Sorry, baby. I'm not buying... I'm not asking you to buy. Just hold me close like this, Walter. Hold me close. Goodbye, baby. Oh, no! I killed her, Keys. I killed Phyllis. But maybe her aim hadn't been so bad after all. I I felt funny, lightheaded and and blurry. But I made it keys all the way here to the office. It's almost 4.30 now. It's cold. And keys, I... I want you to do me a favor. I want you to be the one to tell Lola. Kind of gently... Before it breaks wide open. I want you to take care of him. That guy's a kitty. So he doesn't get pushed around too much. As for me, I... You what, I... Walter? Uh, hello, Keys. You're up pretty early, aren't you? What are you doing here? The night watchman phoned me, Walter. <laughs> Seems you left a trail. Blood. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. How long have you been standing over there? Long enough. Well, now I suppose I get the big speech. 
Go ahead, Keys. Let's let's have it. You're all washed up, Walter. <sighs> oh, thanks. That was short, anyway. I'm going to call a doctor. What for? So I so I can walk all the way to the gas chamber under my own power. Something like that, Walter. Look, Keys. Keys, I, I've got a different idea. Yeah. Suppose you went back to bed and and didn't find out anything until the morning. Would you do that for me, Keys? Give me one good reason. Because I... I need four hours to get where I'm going. You're not going anywhere, Walter. You want to bet? I'm going across the border. How's this, Keys? I'm... I'm up on my own two feet. Walter, you haven't got a chance. You watch me. You'll never even make it to the elevator. So long, Keys. I'm much obliged. <sighs> Hello. Send an ambulance to the Pacific Building on Olive Street. Yeah, it's a police job. How you doing, Walter? Uh, I'm fine. Only somebody moved the elevator a couple of miles away. They'll be here soon. You know why you couldn't figure this one, Keys? Because the guy you were looking for was... was too close to you. He was right across the desk from you. Closer than that, Walter. Yeah. I love you, too. The curtain falls on double indemnity, and as usual, Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray contributed splendid performances. Barbara, as I recall, you were a blonde in the picture of double indemnity. Yes, Bill. I always wondered how I would look as a blonde, and I found out. Then I decided to let nature take its course again. Oh, but not with your complexion, I hope. No, no, I'm very careful with my complexion. I always use Lux toilet soap. Uh, doesn't anybody care what I do? <laughs> oh. oh, yes, indeed, Fred. What have you been doing? Well, I've been making a picture at RKO. Uh, Skeely, uh, Never a Dull Moment with Irene Dunn. That's the title, Never a Dull Moment. And believe me, it's... Well, a... I've been uh, at MGM making To Please a Lady with Clark Gable. And, brother, mm -hmm. that wasn't dull either. For instance, I... <laughs> oh, look, Barbara, uh... tomorrow night's Halloween. And if you don't let me say something, I'll set fire to your broom. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Isn't anybody going to let me say something? <laughs> Barbara, didn't you just return from the premiere of your new picture? Yes, it was held in Indianapolis, and I certainly had a wonderful time. It's all about automobile racing, you know. Imagine going all the way to Indianapolis every year just to see those speed races. Well, that is hard to understand with Wilshire Boulevard just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> What's just around the corner for next week, Bill? More excitement? Yes, Barbara, we think it's one of the most eventful nights of our season. First, the play is a powerful love story. David O. Selznick's immortal screen version of Rebecca. And our stars, two of the most famous, making their first appearance together on our stage. England's brilliant actor-director and his lovely lady. Need I say more? <laughs> Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee. Oh! <laughs> well, that's really something to look forward to, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and come back again soon, both of you. Who is this Hollywood star? One of Hollywood's smallest actresses. She looks even younger than her 21 years. She tips the scale at 95 pounds, keeps her waistline a sensational 20 inches. Such a tiny package must be Wanda Hendricks. That's right, John. Because of her small size, Wanda has even her lingerie made to order. Loves being able to choose unusual shades for slips and nighties. She's very definite about their care. 
insists on Lux Flakes for her personal things. She won't tolerate ordinary washing methods that might fade colors. As Hollywood stars know, gentle Lux Care keeps pretty slips and nighties colorful as new three times as long. Take Wanda Hendrick's tip. Give all your lingerie that lovely Lux look. Get a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee in Rebecca. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. We are all aware of the vital importance of religion in American family life. Religious education stabilizes the family and makes for better citizens. We urge you and your family to attend and actively support your church. Take your problems to church this week. Millions leave them there. Heard in our cast tonight were Bill Conrad as Keyes, Rhoda Williams as Lola, Bill Johnstone as Norton, and Robert Griffin... Howard McNear, Norman Field, Eddie Marr, and Virginia Agnello. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was edited by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Rebecca, starring Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee.